Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I wanna talk about how to trigger your live acoustic drums. Um, so I've been getting a lot of questions about this on several videos at some conferences that I've played. You see live drums and then you also see triggers and people are asking what's the function, why do you do it, how do you do it. Um, and so although I, we didn't do triggers a lot on the churches that I've played it mostly, done some conferences and there's a lot of churches now that are adding triggers to their live acoustic kits. So first of all, why would you add triggers to a kit or what is the purpose? And I want to say like there's kind of three areas. Number one for churches specifically is layering. Okay, so what I mean by that is I've got every drum triggered and so what I would do is add a similar sound like a good sounding snare on top of this snare, toms, and so I'm layering those sounds together. So the reason you would layer sounds is if you wanna have consistency. Let's say you know, you're the sound guy at your church and you, know, you wanna be able to influence the snare sound or you wanna push a really clean sound to broadcast um, and so you want to do that. Or maybe if you want to swap between a gospel style and a contemporary and you want to switch between songs, you can uh, add a sample that's more in line with gospel and then switch over to a sample that's a little bit deeper. Same thing with the toms. So that is kind of that layering. Um, the second reason you may want to uh, add triggers is to add things. So for instance, I've got one trigger here that is a, a clap. So I've got like a, an 808 clap or if you want to do chimes. So the way I have this triggered is you know, these are, are layered, but you could add triggers that add sounds to your setup. I could do a trigger pad over here and add an additional electronic sound. Um, so that's more of, you know, adding electric and over acoustic. Or number three, you could replace. So some people are taking an acoustic kit and they're doing things like filling these drums up where it's just the drum itself. Um, and so you could just replace the sound or some people are using, um, you know, in-house, they're using the live kit sound, but they push to the mix or other things the triggered process sound, um, you know, a little bit heavier than the live sound. So those are some reasons why you could uh, trigger. And that's not the only reasons. You may have other things you want to do, um, but that's why you could trigger uh, your drum. So how are people doing it? Now, there are many ways to do it, but I've selected two kind of workflows um, that I think are some of the most common and best practices. So the first one involves the Roland TM6 Pro. Okay, this thing is packed, jam-packed with features that we're going to talk about in another video, but I just want to give you an overview. So basically, I've got um, on this, the TM6, I've got these six trigger inputs, and so I've got them triggered to kick on number one, snare on number two, I've got my auxiliary on number three, four, five, and six are my three toms. So I've got six um, inputs on here, and um, again, I've got it uh, just layered to a kick sound, I've got the snare layered to a snare sound and then tom. So I can play these, uh, these pads correspond with the trigger that I've got set up. So for instance, I've got kick, I've got snare, I think I've got this set to the clap, and then I've got the three toms. Okay, so I have those sounds kind of layered. So uh, that's the TM6. The other thing we're going to talk about here in a minute is the TM1. This is kind of a run and gun portable version that has two inputs and it's actually made almost like a guitar pedal style where you can uh, switch between kits or mute it and unmute it. So this is a really cool, it's also battery powered if you'd like for it to be. So the TM1 is a really, really neat um, option as well to get into it at a much lower price point for two triggers. So for instance, on the TM1, I may just do kick and snare or I could do snare and then an auxiliary. Like say if I wanted to go from a gospel sound and a clap to a deeper snare sound, and a chime. I'm going to show you that. Or simply kick and snare. There's a lot of ways you could use the TM1. This is another great option for a much lower price point. So let's talk about the other pieces that you need to get going. I've got each uh, drum triggered and there's a couple different types of triggers that I'm using to accomplish different things. So on the toms, on these three toms, I've got a single um, trigger which is the Roland RT30H and then on the snare I've got a dual trigger which does the head and the rim separately. So on that I've got the RT30HR, 
and then the kick is a single um, input but it's got a different bracket on it to fit the kick drum and that is the RT30K, okay? And then in addition, I've got the Roland BT1 bar right here. They make a bunch of different um, products, you know, from the uh, rubber pads to the fully mesh pads and drums to this BT1, which is this bar. I love it, it's like a really, really dense rubber, but it just feels really good. And then they also sent out this Gibraltar stand um, which is a great symbol attachment. I've got a short version and a long version. Now, before I go any further, let me just tell you that everything that I'm using in this video is linked in the description below from Sweetwater, who is uh, partnering with me on this video. So thank you so much to Sweetwater for sending all of this gear out um, and assisting me in so many ways. Sweetwater is an incredible company um, that has so many resources beyond just the products they sell. They're also so knowledgeable. They actually helped me talk through a lot of this stuff as I was trying to figure out what the best use and best case scenario was. So if you want to support my channel, the best thing you can do is use the links that I have provided below. It's not going to cost you anything extra, but if you use that link, then that tags to my affiliate account with Sweetwater and shows them that, hey, Daniel is helping people. <laughs> Daniel, I am helping people. Daniel has helped me. Um, so yeah, use those links. Uh, you can access that. I've also got my own page on Sweetwater. So I've got some of my selected things, everything from microphones uh, to uh, drums, cymbals, everything. Literally everything that I'm using in this video is linked there. So check that out. Take a second. Um, but let's dive into uh, some of the sounds, what this actually sounds like and how I would use this in a real setting. So first we're going to go with the Roland TM6. I've got this set up and I'm going to show you what it would sound like, you know, just the kit by itself. With, I'm going to show you what it sounds like with just the triggers and the overheads, and then I'm going to show you what a blended um, kit sound sounds like. So here we go. Okay, so now we're going to use the TM1, and I've got it on the floor, which is made to be used uh, like a foot switch. Um, and so I've got kit number one, which I've got samples loaded in for like a, a beefy kick and a beefy snare, which I've got a really tight snare. So if I needed to um, swap over and just use that, that's what's going to be on number one. And then on kit number two, I just switch between that, and then that one I'm going to switch these uh, triggers out, because kit number two, I've got a snare and then a chime set up on my BT1. So let me show you. If I would use the, um, the first setting and just a kick and snare. Okay, so now clicked over to kit number two and then I've switched my triggers over if I were to use this as like a snare and then my um, auxiliary sound which is chimes on the BT1. So let me show you what that would be like. Now, that may not be the context that I would use that in uh, for chimes, but say in a contemporary worship song, that may be what you need to add. You may need to want uh, to add like a fat snare sample underneath that and then have like a tambourine 
or chime setting on your auxiliary thing. So I'm running this on a battery. Um, it does not come with uh, a power supply, but you can use, you can plug it into a power supply and get one of those easily. But if you're out gigging, you want to take it to a show with you, the battery supply is great. Otherwise, if you have a more stationary setup, then you can just get a power supply for it. But um, so those are the two different kind of ways that you can very easily get into um, adding samples to your kit, adding triggers to your kit. Um, and so I'm gonna do another video that really does a deep dive into each one of these. And I'll link that, I'll put a card here and link that in the description below as well. So if you wanna get into the nitty gritty of how these work, there's already a lot of great resources out there about each one of these, but I can show you how I would, in a church setting, set each one of these pieces of equipment up um, down to the decay settings and you know changing the pitch and using built-in samples or loading in your own samples because that's the other great thing is on both of these you can load in your own samples so if you want to create your own samples off your kit or you can uh, access a ton of great um, resources out there of different kit samples so yeah this is the Roland TM6 Pro and the Roland TM1 both of these are incredible options if you want to add some triggers to your kit and create a hybrid setup so thanks so much for watching this video um, if you have any questions about this stuff, man, feel free to ask in the comments below. And again, use those Sweetwater links. Um, I've got a link just to the main Sweetwater page. So if you wanna just take that link and like copy and paste it into your browser or save it somewhere. So when you shop, you can use my link. Uh, again, that'll help me at no extra cost to you. And that's the best way, if you like this channel, what I'm posting, that's the best way that you can support my channel. I've also got a couple of giveaways going on right now. I've got one coming up that I haven't released yet, but it's coming soon. And I'm also doing a Sennheiser mic giveaway. I'm giving away these E604 mics, um, and that is on my Gospel Fill number 11 video. So once that thing hits 100K, these mics are going out the door to some uh, lucky winner. So uh, make sure to go and check that video out and you can see all the ways to enter into that giveaway. So thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and we'll hope to see you guys in the next one.